Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 25th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 204 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, take your calls in about two minutes, I promise. Uh, the Libby Schaefe Act is now being pushed by Congressman Steve King. It's starting to get some support on the House floor. It would now make it officially illegal to have a sanctuary city. Every mayor or leader of a sanctuary city or town would be, would go to jail for up to five years for obstructing and hindering the implementation of federal immigration law. Now, what you hear from many liberals is that MS-13 is a figment of Trump's imagination. That either it doesn't exist or it's, it, it, it's marginal, it's minimal, it's, it's, it's five guys, take it easy, it's not a big deal. Okay, listen now to this. Because when you have sanctuary cities, you invite MS-13, okay? The link between the two is inextricable. Lawlessness breeds more lawlessness. Lawlessness invites more criminal behavior. So listen now to this. This is in East Boston, okay? This is not Houston, Texas now. I'm talking East Boston. The latest is now this. Two ruthless MS-13 gang members have now been sent to prison for helping to orchestrate the murders of two teenagers in East Boston. The uh, police chief of Chelsea, Brian Kies, I hope I'm pronouncing it Keys or Kies, K-Y-E-S, hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, Kies, um, says that these two people are extremely dangerous and that he is thankful that they're finally been put away for a long time in jail. He says they didn't just kill these two people, they mutilated them, and they would have killed many more. One of the two MS-13 gangbangers, I swear you couldn't make this up, Joel Martinez, a Salvadoran, he's uh, originally from El Salvador, he's a, another illegal alien, his nickname, he's 23 years of age. His nickname, I swear to you, I couldn't make this up. His nickname is, quote, Animal. That's his nickname, his gang nickname, Animal. When the media and the libs criticize Trump for calling MS-13 gang members, gangbangers, quote, unquote, animals, defending MS-13 and their supposed dignity, quote, unquote, they called themselves animals. That's, that's what they called themselves. Except the only difference is, for this guy, it's a badge of honor. For Trump, it's an insult. It's like, you know, a savage, a barbarian, a monster. No, no, animal. Is my name animal. <laughs> I kill like animal. I'm an animal. So literally, one guy is nicknamed animal. Listen to this. He, um, I mean, just, I mean, he, 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 he practically decapitated this team, faces deportation, but first he has to serve 40 years in prison. So I want you to think about this. We have to house, feed, clothe, shelter, uh, you know, in, in one of our, in one of our state prisons, all on our dime, 40 years. And then, if we're lucky, he's going to be deported back to El Salvador. That's the cost of illegal immigration. Multiply that by the millions, and you understand now what's wrong with this country. But hold on. Animal, uh, apparently he murdered a 15-year-old boy on Trenton Street. He stabbed him and stabbed him repeatedly, especially around the neck area. Okay, so he, he's a vicious criminal. So um, <clears throat> Martinez apparently bragged to an informant saying, I stabbed the blank three times. The reason why he stabbed at him, he, because he said he stared at me the wrong way on the street. He goes, he walked by me. He stared at me. I looked at him. He said, I pulled out my knife. 
He then said, are you going to stab me? Are you really going to stab me? And he said, yes, the Mara rules you. And that's when the guy got it right in the neck. Mara refers to Mara Salvatrucha. That's MS-13's original gang name. So they're basically saying, we own the streets of East Boston. We do whatever we want here. Don't look at me even the wrong way. You look at me even the wrong way. Bang, I'm going to slit your throat and basically decapitate you. Now, if this guy's not, I mean, he's, he's got a great nickname. He is an animal. For once, I agree with these MS-13 gangbangers. That's a great nickname for you. I would, I'd prefer scumbag, but animal is not bad. So, another one killed a fifth, um, uh, another one, Hero Perez, aka Seco, which means skinny in English. He's 27. Another illegal alien from El Salvador. He also faces deportation, but he's not going to serve 40 years in prison on our dime. He's going to serve 35 years in prison on our dime. And apparently there was a teenager that was going to testify against this MS-13 gang. They've been running drugs, uh, heroin, uh, cocaine, human trafficking, sex slaves, However, when they found out that this teenager was going to testify against them, this guy, Hero Perez, shot him, slashed him, and then cut his hand off. They like to mutilate bodies to instill fear. So literally, he chopped his hand off and, you know, started to, you know, mutilate the body. He's getting 35 and um, 35 years. So we're going to take care of him for 35 years, three square meals a day. Plays computer games, shelter him, clothes, computers, you name it, workout. You gotta have the, the basketball courts, the, 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 the guy that do some weightlifting, uh, magazine subscriptions, television, you name it. We're gonna take care of this guy for 35 years on our dime. And then if we're lucky, we send him back to El Salvador. Now you tell me, in all honesty, how sanctuary cities and illegal immigration are not bankrupting and literally killing this country. People are dying because of MS-13. That's why we need the Libby Shafe Act. The sooner, the better. My friends, what we have are lawless judges, Timothy Feely, lawless mayors, say, Macho Marty Walsh, lawless politicians, and lawless borders. We are a country effectively without borders. And if you have no borders, you have no nation. 617-266-6868. Okay, lines are loaded. Brittany, who do you want me to go to first? Jim. All right, Jim in New Hampshire. You're up next. Go ahead, Jim. How you doing, Jeff? Jim, how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, there's a couple points I'd like to make. First of all, I am in favor of this law, but what I'm not understanding is that we already have a federal law in the books called obstruction of justice, and I'm not understanding why they're not enforcing existing laws, because if anybody interferes with law enforcement or the enforcement, impeding them, hide them, whatever, we have a law for that, and it's just to show that we are seeing an erosion of the rule of law because they're not obeying the Constitution, they're not obeying the laws themselves, and we're just going to fall in uh, into ourselves because these people just don't care. They don't care. It's not their kids. It's not their relatives. It's not their loved ones. And they could just snoop their, grab their nose up at everybody and think that they know best. I think we should be able to have the means for people to defend themselves against these people and not harass people because if you come upon one of these gangbangers and you defend yourself, and if we could do that, I bet you would go away. But, of course, they're taking the right to bear arms away from us. Jim, when my sister, and she was, she's great, she's a phenomenal sister, but like, you know, a lot of people, when she was a teenager, she had a rebellion years. My parents had a curfew. We had to be home. Uh, she was very young. She was like 15 or 16. So we had to be home by 9 o'clock, and we had to be in bed by 10 o'clock. 
My sister got into a bit of a bad crowd. She's fine. She's great. But you know how it was, teenage years. She came home. She went to see a movie with her friends. She came home at midnight. She violated the curfew. She violated the bedtime rule. She came in, woke up everybody in the house, which was another violation. You know what my mother did? She slapped her in the face. Just walked up to her, just bang. Like, literally, just bang. Go to your room. You know what this act is, Jim? It's like a slap in the face. Like a hammer to the head. You're completely right. It's obstruction of justice. It's, I mean, you're violating federal immigration law. What they're doing is blatantly illegal. This is almost like a legislative slap in the face or hammer to the head. You don't want to listen to federal immigration law. You want to obstruct justice. You want to obstruct ICE. You want to aid in a bad criminal behavior. You're, viola- you're violating the curfew. You're violating the bedtime. You're waking everybody else up in the house. Well, you know what I got to do now? Kabang. Slap in the How face. How about this, Jeff? How about this, Jeff? That if they go out and they give their people sanctuary in one of these cities and they go out and kill somebody, that would make them an accessory before and after the fact. So why don't you, because they contributed to that death. So why don't you charge them with that, too? We Jim, have laws in the book. Jim, but you're completely people- right. You're compl- You're brilliant. You're complete- I'm, all I'm saying is, Representative King, it, what he's saying is this. We're not, we've become so lawless. That now I got to almost like the proverbial hammer to the head, the baseball bat to the head. I got to hit you over the head with it. It's illegal. You're going to go to jail. Five years in prison. Pass this law. That's, I mean, that's what we've come down to now, Jim. Well, what it really is, they want these people here because they know that since we give them, uh, these uh, pogs give them citizenship, they'll be on the door and they're going to vote them in so they're basically importing voters to keep themselves in office. Bingo. That's exactly what they're doing, to keep their power structure. And this is how they do it because they're losing the political battle. So now they're importing voters and they just don't care how they do it. They want to stay in power and do exactly what they want and snub their nose, but if you break the law of one of their stupid laws, they'll be all over us. There's something wrong here. You're na- you nailed it, Jim. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you for that call. Really, I'm telling you, that's what this law is. Look, Jim is completely right. But, you know, we don't honestly, in a, in a sense, I can almost see why you'd be against this law. Honestly, you say, well, Jeff, we don't need it. You know, it's overkill. Like, we don't, like, how many laws do you need to pass before you finally enforce the laws, right? So, sanctuary, I know sanctuary cities are illegal. I know it's obstruction of justice what these mayors are doing. I know they're violating federal immigration law. I know they're aiding and abetting criminals. I mean, you could, you could literally, tr- you could uh, charge them on crime after crime after crime. Okay. Again, I go back to my young sister, you know, got Jennifer, great girl. Don't get me wrong, but you know, teenage rebellion. She was 15, right? Who wasn't there? Who didn't do stuff like that? So, okay. I got one law, the curfew. Okay. You violated that. I got a second law. You got to be in bed by 10. You violated that. I got a third law. You don't wake up the entire freaking house. Came in midnight. Didn't care. Here's the fourth law. Bang. <laughs> Just slapped her once and go to your room. <laughs> That's what the Libby Shea fact is. It's the bang. It's the here. Let me hit you right over the head with it. I can't be clearer than this. Kaboom. So my question to you is this. Do you support this law? Do we need this law? Or I got to ask you, if they're breaking all the other laws, even if we pass this one, will they break this one too? 617-266-6868. More with your calls. Next. 223 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, lines are loaded. Glenn on the South Shore. Thanks for holding, Glenn, and welcome. Jeff, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure, my friend. Uh, I just want to go back to 9-11. Remember after 9-11, like days afterwards, the media, the liberals are like, don't call them terrorists. It's like, and now Trump was calling MS-13 animals. It's like, first of all, don't speak for me. Stop speaking for the entire American race. I mean, all of America, first of all. And second of all, Jeff, you remember the great General MacArthur. Once you appease your enemies, the war gets bloodier. And that's what's happening. And now it's not overseas. 
It's here in our own country. Oh, Glenn, no, I agree with you. And look, I, you know, I love that analogy, Glenn. A sanctuary city, in many ways, is appeasement. And it's appeasement of MS-13, among others. I mean, am I wrong, Glenn? Oh, you're absolutely right, Jeff. Absolutely right. Glenn, thank you so much, as always, and have a great Memorial Day weekend, my friend. You, you too, as well, Jeff. Thank you. God bless you. Rich in Concord. Rich, thanks for holding, and welcome. No problem, Jeff. I'm actually a wall fan. Now, Rich, my friend, how, how are you? <laughs> I'm well. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I missed you. Rich, you weren't there yesterday, right? I, I wanted to go. I to know. Jeff, I, I missed you, buddy. I was looking forward to seeing you, but that's okay. What's on your mind? Yeah. Believe me, I would have loved to have gone, but thank you for going there, and, uh, and it looked like well, a huge success. But Rich, I mean, you work for a living. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, I the, do, Jeff. that's the thing with us conservatives. We yeah, don't have time know, to protest. We're too I busy two, working. I had, I had two choices, Jeff. I could stop my own carpentry business, or I could sell heroin and collect welfare. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I chose Rich, to do carpentry. Uh, you see, Rich, that's the problem, Rich. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know, and I struggle, Jeff. You know what I mean? I struggle to make a living on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Rich, I know you. You're a businessman. You're a yeah. good family man. You always yeah. want to do what's in the best interests of your family. Rich, you I should do. have been a heroin dealer. <laughs> I know, I know. I, you know, if I could turn back the clock, Jeff. <laughs> it's, it's, too, it's too bad the, these MS-13 clowns from East Boston didn't move their case. <laughs> <laughs> the, the feely. Right? Oh, we lost you, Rich, for whatever reason. No, I, <laughs> I mean, so I don't mean to make light of this. I mean, they really are. They're sadistic, brutal murderers. But, you know, either you laugh or you cry, right? So I'd rather, you know, I'd rather laugh. You know, if I were their lawyers, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we got to move this to Salem Superior Court. <laughs> You're not going to spend the day in prison, guys. <laughs> you just got to get in front of Touchy Feely. Jack in Situate. Jack! How are you, my friend? It was great meeting you yesterday. Yes, I was saying that I was up there, and it was a great show, and hopefully it gets results. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to, uh, you know, there should be some law against these kids from the M13s. We should get them out of the country, never mind sending them to jail. Uh, I don't, maybe we should pro uh, protest uh, politicians on this, too. <laughs> No, Jack, you know, honestly, we could have, like, rally summer. Yeah. With all the outrageous stuff going on, it could be like a rally a week, Jack. <laughs> well, then maybe not a week, but if you come up with something, you know, we got home at 10 o'clock last night. But uh, the biggest thing is that uh, I'm, uh, if there's anything, you know, that you're going to do, let us know, and I'll try to make it. Jack, thank you very much. God bless you, my friend, and have a great weekend. Great Memorial Day weekend. Same to you. It was nice meeting you. God bless you, Jack. It was great meeting you. Bob in New Hampshire. You're up next, Bob. Thanks for holding and welcome. Hey, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Bob? Not good. I just to, um, say something about that law you were telling about, why it's, why it's just a joke. Um, yeah, the Libby, the Libby Schaefe Act. It's named yeah. after the mayor of Oakland. Yeah, it's for, for a couple of reasons, it's no good. One, one reason is up to five years, so that can cut it down to a day. And the second thing is, somebody would get in front of a judge like Feely, and it wouldn't make a difference anyway. And the third thing is, um, there's already a law against obstruction of justice. So, what's the difference? Yeah, so, Bob, I said, that's what I mean, is I could really legitimately see your point. In other words, we already have laws against illegal, you know, against illegal immigration, against sanctuary cities. Like, you know, is this overkill? Like, we don't need another law. We've right. already got enough laws. Just enforce those on the books. Yeah, because you were saying earlier that the immigration laws in this country are bad. They're not bad laws. They just follow. They're fine. Exactly. They just need to be, just need to be followed. That's that. <laughs> All right, Brittany. <laughs> Brittany had to drop that one there. Huh? <laughs> All right. Arthur and Chestnut Hill. Go ahead, Arthur. Thanks, uh, Jeff, and a very happy Memorial, Memorial Day. All the uh, best. All the uh, best to you and your family, Arthur. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, well, you know something? The, the, the most important oath all these politicians take is to protect and our, 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 citizens, our citizens from foreign and domestic enemies and uh, follow the Constitution. Time after time, these people just violate the oath. And it's been it's been just like a, a, a domino effect. When you don't do anything about it, nothing gets done about it. Because the worst action 
is in action. That's why we have what we have today. It's that there's, that there's, there's, there's no respect for law and order. Look what's going on. We've, we've had people trying to, that, that, that there's no question that we're trying to overthrow this government, and they're still walking around in any other, other country. They'd be in jail and, uh, and they're headed for the firing squad. I, I mean, and, and we have a media, okay, which is just as bad as everybody else because none of this can be done with this media. That, that group of, that gang of six or seven need to have their credentials. This country will never go forward until this, something's done about them. And, and, and it's disgraceful as uh, we go and celebrate what, what our um, people in uniform died for and picked up the flag for in battle to, to preserve our, our form of government that give us uh, this liberty. And uh, you know what? We shouldn't let their sacrifices go in vain. Arthur, very well said. Very well said. Thank you for that call. Okay, all the best. God bless you. God bless you, Arthur. Really eloquently, very well said. 617-266-6868. Okay, more with your calls. And I, w I got a story for you. You're really going to want to hear this. This citizen took down a shooter at an Oklahoma City restaurant. Did this armed citizen do the right thing? Or the liberals are now accusing him of being a vigilante. I'm going to give you that story, your reaction, I promise. But first, police in Portland, Oregon, say a hit-and-run crash has injured several people on Portland State University's campus. WRKO's Bill Trefiro has the latest from the newsroom. What are the details, Bill? 236 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, joining me now, as he always does at this time, he is the co-host of the Kelly Financial Services Show. You can hear it here on WRKO AM 680 every Saturday, i.e. tomorrow, from 9 a.m. until noon. John Boudris. John, how are you, my buddy? Well, I'm uh, scratching black fly bites here. I am up at my farm at, in the undisclosed location far in the north. <laughs> at some secret locale. At some secret locale. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> John, I got to ask you, um, obviously tomorrow, big show for you, Memorial Day weekend. You know, I'm just curious, John, as a patriotic American, what does Memorial Day mean to you and to your family? Well, it's, 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 it means an awful lot to me. My father was a vet. Now, he was not uh, killed in service, but he served two tours during World War II. Um, and when I visit him at the cemetery, his plot is right near the veterans who were killed in action part of the cemetery. And I find myself lingering there all the time, just being thankful and grateful. That's, that's what it means to me. John, do you think enough Americans commemorate and honor our vets on Memorial Day? Or has it just become Not an excuse to have a long weekend and go to the beach? It, oh, no, it, it's a beach day. It's a barbecue day. I think that, that most even have no idea what the actual meaning of the holiday is. And I, I'd refer to it more as a holy day than a holiday myself. John, I'm just curious, buddy, what is on tap for tomorrow's show? Well, tomorrow we have, we have a show that uh, encourages and instructs people who are heading toward retirement how to avoid the, the, the trip wires and uh, booby traps that await us uh, when, when we are getting near that age. Uh, in particular, uh, planning for medical proxy and financial proxies should you become incapacitated is such an important issue and we have one of kelly financials experts speaking about that at length and the things that we can do uh, i know in my own personal life i have a dear friend who about a year ago went in for what was supposed to be a routine procedure but something went wrong he had a stroke he's incapacitated and his whole life savings disappeared on him and it's a real tragedy john um i know there's some big events for kelly financial 
Uh, you guys had one just yesterday, and I know there's two more coming, and uh, one on June 14th and the other one on June 28th. And I'm just curious, when they go to these these sort of um, complimentary, informative dinner events, uh, which I'm a huge fan of, what can people expect when they go? I know they're going to get a wonderful dinner. Uh, wh- 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 why is it so important for people to attend these events? Well, you know, it's a way of kind of getting your toe in the water without having to make any commitments. You'll get to meet the people that you theoretically and potentially will be working with as a family. Uh, They're all there in one spot. So you get a chance not only to meet the portfolio managers, but you meet the estate attorney, you you meet their the accountants and tax preparers with whom Kelly Financial works. You get to meet uh, the boss herself. Uh, Kelly Kelly will be there. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> You have her phone number when you need to talk with her. Uh, it's, it's a great way to just get to know that group of people who will really be in your corner. My friends, if you're heading towards retirement, I want to personally invite you to one of Kelly Financial Services. These are two informative dinner events that are upcoming. One is on Thursday, June 14th at the new Davios. I'm telling you, the food is to die for. It is in Braintree, right near the the office of Kelly Financial. The other one is at the Tuscan Kitchen in Burlington on Thursday, June 28th. Call now. There are still reservations available. 888-800-1881. 888-800-1881. John, buddy, keep up the great work. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's show. We have been talking with John Boudris. He is the co-host of Kelly Financial Services Show. You can hear it every Saturday tomorrow, 9 a.m. until until noon. John, have a wonderful, blessed, happy Memorial Day weekend, my friend. And you too. And and say some prayers for those men and women who gave that ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy what we have. I will. I will. Well said, John. Thank you very much. 617-266-6868. Okay. 20 minutes, I guess. Less than that. 18 minutes. The show is going to be over. We're going to go on a nice Memorial Day weekend. We'll be back on Tuesday. I want to get your take on this story. I'm really dying to get what your reaction is. 617-266-6868. Okay. Here is exactly what happened. This took place at a restaurant in Oklahoma City last night. Uh, it is a restaurant called Louis Grill and Bar. Apparently, from everything I've read in these media stories, a real hot spot in northern Oklahoma City. They say the food is great. The ambiance is great. Well, apparently last night, as the restaurant was full, a mother and a daughter were there having a nice dinner. They were celebrating a birthday. I don't know if it was the mother or the daughter, but somebody's birthday was being celebrated. There they were, uh, you know, mom and, and her daughter, you know, and together. And an armed young individual, who so far I don't know the name of, but apparently walked in with a gun and shot both of them in the restaurant. Just walked in, there, boom, boom. Now, they don't know the motive yet. They're going to try to find out the motive. I'm, sus- I'm just guessing here, but my suspicion is probably romantic, either with the daughter, maybe the mother, some kind of a jilted boyfriend or lover. That's just my guess. But anyway, we're going to find out hopefully in the next couple of days. He walked in, shot the mother first, then shot the young daughter. Uh, she was a juvenile, so I guess she's under 18. And as mayhem broke out in the restaurant, one man, and I'm getting conflicting reports, ran out of the restaurant fell either he broke his arm or he broke his leg he broke something some reports say his leg others say his arm whatever he broke something the shooter then now the mother and daughter it looks like they're going to survive the one is in critical condition but it looks like they're both going to make it anyway the shooter walked out of the restaurant as he walked out of the restaurant an armed citizen encountered him. Seeing that he had a gun, having heard the gunshots, 
seeing the pandemonium and mayhem inside the restaurant, the armed citizen took out his gun, and I kid you not, boom, boom, and fatally shot and took out the shooter. Okay? Killed him, basically on the spot. Now, um, in, in Oklahoma, they don't have concealed carry. They have what's called open carry. So you have to get a license, right? But once you get your license, you can open, openly carry your, 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 your weapon, your gun. He had an open carry license. He legally had the gun, the, uh, the armed citizen, saw what was going on, saw the shooter running out, took out his gun, and said, I'm not going to wait for the police. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm taking him down. Basically, uh, he took him down, and he shot him, and not only disarmed him, he killed him. Now, the liberal media, especially CNN and others, are now trying to claim that this is a vigilante shooting, that this armed citizen engaged in vigilantism, that it was not his place to take down and fatally shoot this shooter, that this should have been left to the police. The citizens of Oklahoma City and almost everybody at that restaurant says this guy is a hero. Let me tell you, I think he's a hero, and I'll tell you why. Number one, A, he did a good thing. I'm telling you right now. Number two, this individual had just shot two people. For all we know, they were dead. He's running out of a restaurant. You don't know if he's going to shoot or kill anybody else. What you know is he, he perpetuated a massacre. He shot two people. He's a shooter, an active shooter. He's posing a threat to anybody in that parking lot, anybody at that restaurant. The right thing to do was for that person to take out his gun and take him out. You have no idea who else could have been shot or killed by that man. Number one. Number two, he clearly was in fear for his life. I would. I hear boom, 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 boom. Yelling, screaming, pandemonium. I see a guy walking out of a restaurant. My first reaction is, is he going to shoot me? I got a right to defend myself. If I had a gun on me, if I had open carry or concealed carry, whatever, I would have taken out my gun and I would have taken him out. That, to me, is a fundamental right of self-defense. But I'm even going to be even more frank with you. Yeah, like I'm in the confessional. I call this tax relief. Because I'll tell you what he did. By taking that shooter out, you know what he did? He spared the cost of arrest, indictment, incarceration, God knows how many appeals. Uh, they probably would have gone for the death penalty or tried to in Oklahoma. We would have to take care of this guy for decades if he didn't get the death penalty. In other words, he saved us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. This guy did the U.S. taxpayer a huge favor. To me, he's a hero on every level. He's not a vigilante. He's a good, decent citizen who did the right thing. My question to you is this. An armed citizen kills a gunman at an Oklahoma City restaurant. Did he do the right thing? Did he do the wrong thing? I say yes. What do you say? All of your calls. 617-266-6868. Next. 254 here on the great WRKO. Okay, an armed citizen... They have open carry in Oklahoma City at a restaurant just north of Oklahoma City, just on the tip, uh, Louis Bar and Grill. An armed gunman shot up a mother and a daughter. Luckily, they'll survive, but shot him at the restaurant. Mayhem broke out. He, The shooter then, the armed gunman, fled the restaurant. As he opened the door, he ran into an armed citizen. The armed citizen, in fear of his life, pulled out his gun, Boom, boom, killed the armed gunman. I think it was a legitimate shooting, self-defense, I think public safety, and honestly, saved the taxpayers a hell of a lot of money. Liberals are saying it's vigilantism, and this armed citizen should be arrested for murder. 
Who do you side with? 617-266-6868. As always, you can text us, WRKO, whatever your message is, to 70470. This is from 603. Jeff, as a legal firearm owner and carrier, there is one point that I want to impress upon you, and I hope you never forget it. And it is this. You are your own first responder. It takes the police 10 minutes to get to the scene, but it only takes me three seconds to draw my firearm and get on target. Remember that, Jeff, and God bless you, my friend. No, God bless you, 603. I couldn't have said it better myself. Aaron in New Hampshire, you're up next. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Jeff, thanks for taking my call, brother. My pleasure, Aaron. Uh, just real quick, happy Memorial Day to you, Brittany, Jared, and everybody out there. Thank you, Aaron. Happy Memorial Day. All the best to you and your family. Thank you. Um, you know, when you said the CNN and MSNBC said that they should, they should still wait for the police, how can you say that after Broward County, after what we saw there? Not only the time that it takes, but the procedures that the police have to take when you're standing there right there. Well, you see, Aaron, they're assuming that he shot the mother and the daughter and that he was just going to leave, right? Like not hurt anybody else. And I'm thinking, how could you make that assumption? You don't know that. And I, you know, Aaron, think about it. You're going, let's say, I don't, Aaron, is there a restaurant you like? What's that? Is there a favorite restaurant that you have? Yeah, actually, a Hanover Street Chop House. Okay, boom. All right, yeah, great, great. Okay, okay, yeah. So, Hanover Street Chop House, right? There's Aaron heading off, looking forward to a nice, you know, Thursday night steak dinner. And suddenly you hear people yelling, screaming. They're running out of the restaurant. You hear boom, 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 boom. And you come out, the guy comes out, you see him with a gun. You're face to face with him, five feet, three feet apart. You're not going to say to yourself, a la CNN, oh, I think maybe he's done shooting everybody. So I'm just going to step aside and let him go to his car or run off and I'll let the police take care of it. You're going to rightly say, I'm in danger. My family's in danger. Everybody around me is in danger. I've got a gun. I pull out my gun. I take him out. Am I wrong, Aaron? You're not wrong. You know, it kind of reminds me of every time Brittany says, why the good people have to suffer because of the bad people with the laws. Amen. Amen. Aaron, thank you very much. I appreciate that call. God bless you, buddy. Bob in Peabody. Go ahead, Bob. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Bob. How are you? Good, good. But I've, I've carried a firearm since the early 90s, and uh, of, co- of course I go to the uh, the classes uh, every once in a while. I've probably gone to 10 or 12 classes, and they give you scenarios in which you're, you're uh, able to pull out your weapon. And uh, one of the scenarios that they give um, is that you, uh, it's an actual example. If you are in, let's say you're in a convenience store, you're in the back of the store, you're shopping through the, the whatever you want, no one else is in the store, or could be other people in the store, and a gunman walks in and he points the gun at the clerk and says, I'm going to kill you if you don't give me the money. Do you have the right, they ask this question in the class, do you have the right to shoot that person? Please tell me the answer is, is yes. It is. God bless you. Because you have the right to shoot uh, to, to protect yourself, and the key words here are, and those around you. So you've got someone threatening someone's life, and you are in control of the situation, and you're able to shoot that person. Amen. Bob, I wish I had more time. You're a thousand percent correct. Look, I'm with this armed citizen all the way. In fact, can I be honest with you? I think we should have open carry here. I got to go. Happy Memorial Day. Bye-bye. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. 888-800-1881. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 100.7 WZLX HD2 Boston. An iHeart Radio station.